Nice! A day off of work for once. I can finally work on this side hobby again. Let's do this thing, camera. Hello, friends, and welcome back to my review Let's Play thing of Action 52 Owns, a fan base remake compilation thing of one of the more infamous games in video game history and tri that tries to be different. Sort of like what I'm doing here with this live action scene. Anyways, we've covered through most of these games on this compilation in a previous video or two, and despite this currently incomplete, maybe delayed state of fan base games, uh, most of these games so far were actually playable. Hell, some of them were even good. I think only Critical Bypass was the only one that kind of sucked so far, so... This part will cover the last one or two pages of this launcher, so let's start this thing. Let's uh, start off with Storm Over the Desert, a.k.a. Storm Over the D, or Storm Over the Dez, or whatever the hell they called it back in the day. Now, when we last saw this game, this was one of the few games on the original Action 52 that had a proper title screen to it. Anyways, there might be a few problems with scale and perspective and the terrible noise that your tank made. But that's the least of the original game's problems, because there's a game there's a version of this on the Genesis version of Action 52. But for some reason it's called Norman. And uh, for some reason it doesn't have a title screen because, you know, it's past the first page and the Genesis version of Action 52 is just that fucking bland and uninspired. But the similar size and perspective problem still remains, so it carried that on, despite it being bland and boring and stuff. Let's face it, the remake's gonna make this a lot better. <laughs> I say that while I adjust the window. Anyways, the title screen shares similarities without the NES version. And it has its own soundtrack, which the original didn't have. Oh, the music doesn't loop itself. Uh, oh well, let, let's get to the game. Here it's kind of a fairly competent shooter where your tanks, they ta they move in unison with each other. Kind of like a barber ship for head. Oh no. Oh god, no! Donald Trump! Trump. He's, He's gonna, gonna make America great again! He's gonna build the wall! Oh, thank God, they got rid of the one that can't sing. What are you saying ah! about my singing? No, 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 no let go of the keyboard, board. let me show you. Great, great, now we get to see the Zelda 2 game over screen. So anyways, this game is yet another example of the great American pastime, which mostly involves going to the Middle East and trying to fix things. In this case, Satan is apparently starting shit up, so it's time to go down there and bring in some of that there American justice. America. The objective is to blow up as many of the Devil's Army as you can. Somehow you get money for this, which you can use to replenish your tanks. I think the tanks ought to repair themselves over time, so yeah. Um, you can't run over the giant Saddam Husseins anymore, but you can pick them off at a distance for a shitload of money. Yeah, just make sure that you avoid the... rocks? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's supposed to be a minefield or something. Here are the perspective problems from the original games that's been kind of addressed, maybe? At one point we get to the town from Sombreros, uh, here we have to bring down a wall in order to... Let's just call it a stalemate, this didn't happen, uh, we were at war. So yeah, that was Storm Over the Desert, this is actually a pretty good game, just like many of the other things, so yeah, kudos to you! Uh, Pish Taco on Silent... What, that, what the fuck kind of name is that? Kind of doubt that's your real name, dude, but it could be worse. You could name yourself something really ridiculous, like Phase of Leap Planet or whatever. Anyways, on to the next game. It's time for the remastering of Mashman. Yay. To be honest, this game should have been on the Genesis Action 52, in that the game is completely dull, boring, and repetitive. Seriously, it's just a glorified hurdle simulator with music that will put you to sleep. What exactly are the buildings in the background trying to say, though? We'll find out in the remake. Alrighty, this is off to a good start. The preview image shows some dickweed telling our character to fuck off while the cameraman's foot is lounging in the background. New technology, huh? wonder if that's what's keeping the buildings from falling over. Seriously, what's with that foot? 
Anyways, we start off with a nice nod to the Action 52 menu screen. Windowed or full screen? No, I don't want that full screen shit. Wait, C418. Hey, that's the guy who made the music for Minecraft. Oh my god, this guy put elevator music in this game. It fits the original theme perfectly. Alright, let's start this thing. So anyways, the game starts off with our hero who is pretty happy that he's stepping in purple muck. Uh, the backstory here is that our hero, the Mash Man, had this one job of doing the old-timey mashing grapes into wine and shit with your foot. And people liked him for it because apparently all the villagers are fucking alcoholics. And then some robot vendor came in and, oh god, this is gonna be like a message about the advances of technology or something. Yeah, apparently automation resulted in urban sprawl, rendering Mashman's winemaking method obsolete. So, naturally, in a normal world, Mashman would go on to switch careers or something and become like an architect, which I'm pretty sure happened in the game, because as you can kind of see from the buildings, things aren't going so well. Uh, how are these buildings not falling over? Well, that's rude. Wait, what, did Mashman sleep with his wife or something? Oh, well. Why does everybody hate my guts? Okay, come here, I'll stomp you like a Goomba. Whatever. Oh, great, even Bubblegum Rosie hates me. So, I'm not making wine anymore. Is that really a fucking problem? Apparently it is, because everybody hates my guts now. Okay, now it's starting to look like the original game, where I have to dodge some Texas. Holy shit! Did you see that? I just landed on a thumbtack and it fucking tore off one of my toes. Good thing these controls are precise. You know, these are kind of remind me of those protester NPCs in that one PETA game I played ages ago. Fucking town's full of asswipes. Okay, now this is just fucking overkill. I mean, thankfully nobody has to drive in this city of assholes. Yeah, good luck trying to get keep your buildings from falling over. What the fuck is that thing supposed to be? Oh good, good. Even horrible monsters hate me. Yeah, that, that's that's great. Anyways, uh, I'll heed your advice, whatever the fuck you are. Yeah, I better not step on any of these things. I mean, last thing I need is for any more of these, any more of my toes to be, like, violently torn off. Jesus Christ, this game's fucking depressing. Did one of the original developers of Active Enterprises make this game? Alright, alright. Time to focus. Time to do some precision jumpings and things. Uh, okay, can you fuckers stop jumping around and sh- uh oh Whoops. Um, yeah, well, there were too many of you guys anyway, so, yeah, I'm trying to not land on these things. Trying to sco trying to show some gaming skills and shit. Oh, what now? Oh, good! Time to go jump in the river, or, or whatever. Oh my fucking god, he is gonna attempt suicide! <laughs> oh god, what now? Oh, good! An intervention! They tracked me all the way over here. That's nice. Hey, the slug things must have kicked this guy's ass. Good. They're telling me about... No! I'm not going to go back and save a town full of people I hate my guts. Y'all are a bunch of assholes. Must do something. Or else... Well, whose fault is that, huh? For treating me like a fucking leper. What? 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 Still toed shoes floating in the middle of the air now? I... Well... Legendary? How are those legendary? They look like regular boots. Mash. So all this time, <laughs> legendary boots in the middle of the. So all this time there was a pair of magic boots lying in the middle of the lake. Are you kidding me? This seems way too convenient. But at least it'll help address this disintegrating toe problem. You know what? Yeah. Okay. I will take these magic boots. I will go back to the city, and I am going to kick the crap out of every single one of you. Come on, Boots! Let's kick some ass! Eh, I changed my mind. I'll take my chances with the lake. Besides, I hear you can walk on water. I can't jump into a lake because of an invisible barrier. Are, are you for fucking real now? Can I at least crush the guy? Can I at least stomp on his fucking head? No, I can't? Well, shit. <sighs> alright, alright. I'll go back to the city and deal with your stupid fucking rogue robot problem. I gotta make it all the way back, trying to not scunch these things. And my toe just magically regenerated itself. That's nice, that's great. 
Uh, it's time for some more precision and jumping skills. I don't want to end up mucking up my new legendary boots. So all you, whatever the fuck you things are, yeah, get out of my way. I'm gonna, I need to kick some buildings down and step on some human faces. Uh, look. Ah, finally, somebody in this game who's actually nice. I mean, I, I look funny, but she, even though she just called me a lunatic not too long ago, but... And now, I can step on thumbtacks, no problem! Where'd the TVs come from? Oh, those must be the evil robots! You fuckers! I'm supposed to be the one destroying this city! Get back to making wine, bitch! I got asshole NPCs to crush! Anyways, here's the final boss of this game. Oh, you own this city, huh? Well, good job running it. What? Oh, for fuck's sakes! One of the asshole NPCs programmed this thing to kill me, too! So, anyways... Why is... Recording software is acting up, but here's the strategy. Yeah, you know these TVs? Stomp on them, and, uh, you know, that thing does damage. Yeah, it really is that simple. The trick is to crush a TV, and then position yourself just right so that the retarded ice cream maker steps on the wreckage. Do this enough time, and, uh, you should be able to beat the boss. Just make sure you don't step on the TVs yourself. Even with the magic boots, your, your toe still gets torn off when you take damage. Yeah, try to figure that one out. And that should about do it for the, uh, yeah, that's the end of the Rogue Snow Cone Machine. We just saved the city. Yay. Hey, how did you guys survive it? Why did I it? Look, you stupid bastard, it was destroying the city. God, you guys are just a... Yeah, I might have destroyed a few houses. Uh, yeah, maybe I should have waited a few more minutes. It didn't do enough damage. I'm just shaking my head right now. These people are all a bunch of fucking morons. Yeah, I like some good wine. Even if that does involve the risk of getting shanked by an evil TV. What, so I'm the one getting shit for stopping a robot uprising now? Are you for real? Why did, they, why did the game make me come back here? It's clear that everybody... WHY AM I GETTING HANGED?! I just saved the city from a bunch of rogue robots and so they sent a fucking lynch mob after me? So yeah! The moral of the story is, there's people out there who'll always be assholes, even if you do save them from certain death. Life sucks, hallelujah, holy shit! God, this game's fucking depressing. What? Well, what now? Let me guess, it's actually gonna show my lifeless body being, like, hung up and... What's the Cheetah Man doing here? And why is the recording software causing the sound to speed up? Oh, please, please, have the Cheetah Man beat up these fuckers. Do it, do it, yes, yes! <laughs> yeah, he vengeance, you fucks! By the way, this is the only appearance of the Cheetah Man in its entire compilation. And so, there's the good ending of this extremely depressing game. Yes, there's multiple endings. <laughs> Let me show you the other one. Yeah, remember this... whatever the fuck this thing's supposed to be? Yeah, her dialogue changes depending on how many of her offspring that you accidentally or intentionally crush. Crush too many, and she ends up acting like a bitch just like all the asswipes in the city. So, of course, you beat the game as normal, everybody hates you and you get lynched. Only this time, the Cheetah Men don't show up. And then we really do get one of the most depressing and is one of the de most depressing games ever made. Have some kittens. Well, to give this game credit, it did manage to recreate a few things from the original Action 52. Uh, first of all, this mash man did recreate the dreary, depressing tone of the original and cranked it up to 11. And two, well, let's face it, I think I remember at this point during my bridge playthrough, I was mostly screaming like a lunatic anyway, but this time around, it's not because the game sucked. Yeah, thanks for that, Billy Bob. Anyways, on to the next game. Uh, we have... Oh, goody. Building Climber 5000. Yay. To be honest, this game was actually kind of meh when compared to some of the other games on Action 52. Uh, it basically had you climbing the tallest building ever while people drop bowling balls and hot dogs at you. Uh, the boss is a seagull, you die by touching a window, and that's pretty much about it. 
I mean, if this was the Genesis version, it would be like nine levels and the same two songs repeated over and over again. It's just that blanded colorless. This must be a challenge for the person that remade this game. So let's check it out. Naturally, the person who remade this game knew how boring and bland the original was and, you know, actually tried to do something original with this 8-bit Game Boy looking thing, complete with badly digitized voice samples, which fits this pretty well. So for the gameplay, it's similar to the original, as in, you climb a building, that's where the similarities end. Here, this time, you actually have a ranged attack, and it's actually pretty effective, and the controls are responsive, since you, and you can also fire diagonally as well, so that's pretty much a plus. I mean, yeah, holding down a key in order to move is kind of annoying at first, but you'll get used to it quickly. Here, instead of dodging hot dogs and fighting seagulls, there's this... Instead, here, there's this mutant alien bug invasion thing. I know it's cliche, but the original had you die by touching a window, so I'll give the remake some slack. I mean, here, you actually shoot them out like they were obstacles. At least they think they're supposed to be windows, anyway. Occasionally, you'll run into these guys doing jumping jacks. I don't know why they're doing it on the side of a building, but you, you bump into them and you get an extra life. Also, there's this nice effect here where you go across the corner of a building to the next area. It kind of reminds me of Fez. Except unlike Fez, I don't have to deal with moving around black holes and things. And also unlike Fez, I don't have to deal with any cryptic fucking puzzles that I have to look on Game Facts for like half of them. <laughs> that scream. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna like make another live action segment because I've heard that scream so many goddamn times and every single time I always find myself freaking laughing at it. It's like, hey, I'm gonna make a really terrible joke. Hey look, I have like a special guest on my show. It's Philip Rivers. <laughs> you know that scream gets me every single time, despite it not being digitized like everything else in the game, which somehow makes it even funnier. Alright, uh, mm. at one point, you come across some more challenging regular enemies, like that flying bitch you saw just there. Yeah, t that one takes a lot more hits with the standard submachine gun with infinite ammo. But don't worry, there are other power-ups in the game. You yeah, like he just said, the flames are. Also, there's more guys doing jumping jacks. I mean, how in the hell are you guys not falling off the building? Now, this flamethrower here, it completely destroys regular enemies, but, you know, it has limited ammunition and things, and you can't exactly shoot through obstacles. Ooh, the music's starting to become silent. Either it's going to be like a prelude to a boss battle, or it'll just lead to some cutscene between two bored hipsters talking about what a jerk that mash man guy is. Okay, it's a boss fight. Now, for the first boss of this game, it's, uh, uh, it's a something. Yeah, it fires projectiles like those wall things, and it bounces from side to side. It's pretty resistant to the... But the Tommy Gun does a trick just fine. Occasionally, it'll drop blocks from the sky, which you'll see coming from a mile away, but overall, the boss is simple. You just keep chipping away for, with its machine gun, and it will eventually fall. At least it's not fucking seagull this time. Anyways, there's more game after this, but I'm gonna wrap up things here. I mean, part of it's because I've shown you how the gist of this game works, but but most of it is because I'm kind of running out of hard drive space at this point. Anyways, there's Waldo doing jumping jacks to celebrate my achievement, and my reward, a different type of music, and more ammo for my... Oh fuck, I'm at the hard drive limit! No! Jesus, it's like 3 o'clock in the freaking morning now, are you kidding me? Anyways, I'm gonna go take a nap now, I'll be back with more of this side project. Anyways, that was where the ad break was gonna go if I were to sell out like a bitch and cut off my own dick. Now back to the review thing. Like Mash Man, this game is also a very boring hurdle simulator, but with a graveyard theme this time. Still a better love story than Twilight. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I got the two games mixed up. Let's do this again. This is yet another generic space shooter where there are one-ups that actually give you hit points. Try figuring that one out. There's also an unfair difficulty spike around like level 3 or something. That's where the game stops being mediocre and then turns into Rape Bill. Oh boy, I can't wait to recreate this journey again. Well, this is a good start. The description sounds like lyrics to the nerdiest rap ever. So the title screen starts off with random banging in the background, which I'm actually kind of surprised is not my neighbors telling me to stop screaming at this point. Here the game actually plays similar to Robotron. You're a thing, firing at other things, in a thing kind of background. There's also a strafe option, which is good for killing the things. There's also unkillable things, which text, which kind of hard to read in the recording window. It's, it's basically a journal of some space journey to God knows where. Yeah, those one-up things from the NES version were changed to proper power-ups because, you know, the person who made this is not fucking retarded. Yeah, avoid enemy attacks! Wow, well, that's really great advice there, thing. Yeah, these things move, and you must kill them in order to make the red door fuck off. Yeah, the strafe button actually makes this a lot easier, so... So naturally, I miss a bunch like a stupid ass. Something in this area seems strange. Oh, oh yeah, whatever gives you that impression. Okay, now we're definitely getting into the whole Wrightville portion of the original game. Thankfully, there's a save checkpoint system this time in place of the many, many save states from the emulator that I used during that abridged playthrough. Oh yeah, you can also fire diagonally, which is good. Very, very, very useful in this type of game like this. Yeah, it's around level 4 here that I might start to struggle a bit. Thankfully, there's this area where I can camp out, and of course, these fuckhats are smart enough to not wander into my bullets, which is good, so, you know, I gotta use strategies and shit. Captain's Log! We encountered these red fuckers that are unkillable, and maneuvering past them takes precision, which might be a bit tricky since I had like five drinks at this point. Storage room? Storage room? That's what it's called? Yeah, we had an excess of landmines and those auto-fire turrets that are unkillable and unbreakable. So yeah, let's just activate all of them and put them here just in case we need them. No, 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 I'm not fucking picking up the power-ups in the journal entries. No, they, they, can just, they can go rot. Well, unless you want me to go throw a bunch of fucking noodles here. <laughs> unless you want me to throw a bunch of fucking needles here. <laughs> yeah, noodles. What, what does that say? Gate entry? <laughs> yeah, fuck maneuvering. I ain't maneuvering through that shit. It's like precision bringing a meal through a fucking haystack. Okay, now that's just bringing back memories of that infamous maze game from like 15 years ago. Yeah, Captain's Log. I kind of cleared my way to the entrance, so you're on your own. I'm out. Alright, so that was my experience while playing through this game. Hey, I just realized something. Yeah, you know that pink beep boop character? You know, the player character that you just played as from like the bips and bops and whatever? Yeah, this thing is the exact same boss that from that Silver Star remake back in part one. It even has the same kind of name. That's actually kind of clever. Knowing how this works, this probably means that there will be that hourglass with 50 billion hit points making an appearance somewhere in this game like Anyways, I am so not putting off covering this stupid ad game, so let's, uh, let's, let's hear it. In this game, the lone pink ant wages war against every other insect on the planet, apparently. This even includes other pink ants for some reason. Uh, since you can't move from the bottom part of the screen, this means you're kind of fucked if any of the other bugs make it to the bottom part of the screen. Oh, and you're kind of immune as long as you're off to the side here for some reason. This game sucks. Yes! An excuse to rip on the Genesis version some more! <laughs> yeah, this time you can actually move around this time, but this time around there's actually unkillable spiders that are immune to your ants' red globs of doom. Yeah, this game's another example of some of the Genesis actually confused many, many problems. 
Yeah, let's not play test this game, and let's make the unkillable spiders appear at random. So in some play, so in some cases, they can actually outnumber the regular enemies and make you and pretty much render you fucked. This is level one, by the way. And let's make the game have like nine levels and repeat the same two songs. And let's have little to no changes between the levels because it's past the first page. And you know, let's just have old grandma remind me and tell me what level I'm on every single fucking time I die. I mean, I doubt anybody will try to play through this and call us out on this laziness in a YouTube video 20 years later. You. So after a mumbling, rant-filled tangent, let's start this game. Oh goody, this looks like a Unity game. That's a good start for everything. So begins the remake of Dead Ant for Action 52 owns. Seems epic enough. Dead sucked. Nice homage there to Wolfenstein Brush, and he used the same music as the original. Anyways, here's the objective, is to uh, chunk rocks at other ants until all the bad guys are dead now. It's literally the same premise as the NES and Genesis versions. Kill shit and don't die. Yeah, this time around, instead of unkillable spiders that appear at random, there's occasionally ants that spew fire. They get killed like every other enemy in the game. The colony thing on the bottom corner right there, it's your life counter. And the game is generous enough to give you a whole bunch of them. Oh, what now? New word the name yeah, you can die time. by running into those rocks. Yeah, yeah try not to do that. They released information Zombie saying, outbreak? What the fuck are you talking about? From the mouth oh, so this takes place in a Resident Evil universe now? Be advised that if an infected becomes hostile, the only way to harm them is to shoot them in the head. Or you could just chunk rocks at them, it's just as effective. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, since I don't have any plants, I'm pretty much fucked right now. Unless... Really? Oh, by the way, this counts as a boss. Yeah, green ants that bum rush you and die in one hit. Ooh, terrifying zombies and spooky skeletons and shit. What, what, no narration to the next level? Really? Oh, but you can say get psyched? No, 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 I'm sorry. That's, that's not how you do a level transition, I'm sorry. This is how you do a level transition. Level 2. I also gotta like that over time the enemy ants just die by running into the many projectiles that are on the ground. Uh, I also like how the description of the game also sets the push pebbles to close a hole or something. Yet the entire game takes place on this flattish plane without any holes whatsoever. And the objective is, you know, to chunk rocks at other ants. Now at this point I'm deliberately playing like shit because this is clearly an arcadey type game where the aim is just to get a high score. See, so you see, the enemies are running into their own projectiles like a bunch of stupid asses. Anyways, getting bored now! What? The game over is not narrated? How lazy is this? Bad? Really now? I made ants cry? Was it because I was bored and the game was repetitive? Seriously, this looks like a screensaver from the 90s. So yeah, that's Dead Ant for Action 52 Owns. And all I can say about this is, finally, a remade game that's only just average instead of being good. It's been a while since I ran into one of those. So let's go on to what's next. Bo, oh, are you still playing this thing? The NES version of this game is not very stable. It crashes when you beat the game. It crashes when you try to exit to the menu. It's trash. Unfortunately, a Genesis version had like three of these things. One of them was a near remake of the original, minus all the technical problems. It's bland and not very impressive. This one has you holding a chess piece with limited ammunition in first person. It's also very boring unless you play it in Game Master mode. Jesus, they recreate one thing from the original and it still looks lame. The last shooting gallery happens to be like named Billy Bob. Except instead of pissing me the fuck off with the worst platforming physics ever, it, this one plays like a discount Lethal Enforcers 2. Here you had limited ammo and the lazy fucks at Farsight forgot to program in any power-ups, so if you run out of ammo you just kinda have to take it up the ass like a YouTube partner. It's also very trash and boring. So let's get this out of the way. Yay! Game Maker logo! <laughs> That's a sign of quality. Well, at least it didn't give me a seizure, so that's a good start. 
Yeah, in this game, there's multiple modes uh, and a two-player option. Uh, Keepy Uppy has you bouncing a heavily pixelated ball on top of a Mode 7 background. Keep it in the air until you get bored or something. Pac-Man, no! The regular mode has you shooting random shit in a t set time limit. The targets give the same score regardless of how close or far away they are. Think that's how it works? Probably not. I'm also pretty sure the reload sound was taken from some Konami game. And those birds from Duck Hunt? Uh, thankfully, it's a freeware game. And of course, Pac-Man just got eaten by ghosts off screen again. But on the plus side, the game didn't crash. Yeah, that's that going for it. I love how a title bl just blocks out the score counters in the background. It's Yeah, how you like that run, Luigi? It's just okay. Yeah, you're right. Let's just get to the next game. So, that about does it for the shooting gallery. Oh, wait, there were supposed to be like seven levels? But there were only two, like, two gameplay options. I don't know, maybe this guy didn't meet his Kickstarter goal. Unfortunate. That explains the unfinished state and placeholder sound from Pac-Man. Next game on this list is Time Warp Tickers. Hopefully you have the time to listen to me whine and... Speaking of time, I actually managed to get this video up by this Christmas. Yeah, time management rules! That and I actually have time to work on this thing. Woo! Don't worry, I only made like four of those live action scenes. Let's just get to the intro. Play my game! Oh god, where do I start with this? No, seriously, you look at this footage and you try to figure out exactly what the hell is supposed to be going on here. Like, three player one? What the fuck does that even mean? This was a thing that existed. Somebody at Active Enterprises made this. I mean, the only thing that makes sense here is all the save states I used from this raw footage. Uh, shut this fucking music up! Oh good, something I can understand! The remake of Time Warp Tickers is a Flash game, so it's a good chance it might take up like 90% of this PC's RAM. Flixel Framework, aka Adobe Flash. I love the MIDI remix as well. Wait, they're load times now? Hold on a second, this game needs to reticulate some splines. So begins the time warp. It's still a bit fucked up, but at least I can somehow understand what's going on this time. The pair of fingers is now a mech suit piloted by some cat thing. Okay, it still doesn't make any sense. And by barely kicking it, barely kicking an enemy since they're flying all over the goddamn place. Yes, yeah, at least you don't die in one hit, which is good. Yeah, here are these switches, which you must unlock by kicking an eyeball into it. Charge attacks, which you can use to aim and hit the switches. Killing enemies gives off the infamous time, which you can collect in order to slow down time, because... Yeah, of course, that, that will make the game even easier, so I'm not gonna do that. Seriously, this game is very, very generous with the power-ups. I don't even think I even had trouble with this. I mean, I didn't even have to do a second take with recording footages and things, which is kind of rare. I mean, I played really sloppy and I still didn't die. I mean, the only really challenging part about this all, all was that part with the pits and the potobos. And that's only because of the Mega Man knockback and the invincibility frame. Yeah, I, I also like the music for this game. Yeah, just get the 8-bit soundtrack, I kinda like it. Just give it some guitar riffs and this could easily pass for something out of that Scott Pilgrim beat-em-up that I played from X Xbox Live many years ago. <laughs> There's another example of me kicking enemies and sending them flying all over the place. Yeah, despite all my editing, this game is in fact very, very short. So we get to the boss of this game. Hey, it's that hourglass enemy from Silver Sword, that remake that I covered in part one. Don't worry, this one doesn't have 80 billion hit points, but it does have a predictable pattern. First he'll fire an eyeball at you, which you kick back. Uh, then it rains fires and potobos with a predictable pattern. Try not to run into it like I'm doing. Then the hourglass warps to the other side and does the same thing again. Yeah, he keeps doing this until you defeat it. By the way, this isn't part of the powers. This is just me editing the footage in Sony Vegas. The boss flashing red means it's almost defeated, and uh, that's the boss fight in a nutshell. I have no idea exactly what the fuck that thing is, but let's jump into it for the sake of it. And so ends the remastering of Time Warp Tickers for Action 52 Ohms. Yeah, it was pretty fun, but it was way too short. Anyways, let's cover the last game on this compilation. Yeah, Jigsaw. This game's pretty infamous. 
But then again, I say that about every single game on Action 52. Let's just get the last preview out of the way. Like Alfredo, this is also a game that's infamous for not starting up unless you played on certain emulators. But even then, the question you want to ask yourself is, can we in fact fix it? Well, giving is how touching a hazard breaks your neck, um, nope. So let's, I, I wonder if like the remake will fix it. Let's, let's give it a go. The final game. And it's not Cheetah Man because, you know, this compilation is still unfinished. But you'll do, Jigsaw. Let us begin. Let us try to begin. Hello? Game? Can you work? Are you fucking kidding me? It's not booting up from the launcher? Hold on a second, I need to go choke a bitch. Alright, let's go manually into this thing and boot it from, like, the file thing here. You see, each of these individual games has its own file within the rare file, so... Maybe, uh, uh, there's something about the launcher that... Wait, why is it launching again? No, I don't want the fucking launcher! No, 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 no! Okay, so I came to the conclusion that this game can't run due to technical problems, which... Somehow makes this the most accurate recreation of something from the original Action 52 for the NES. Seriously, fuck Jigsaw. And it's stupid technical problems and... Okay, that should be about it for Action 52 owns. Uh, let's load this live action segment and get done with it. Alright, and that should about do it for this video. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Uh, if I sold out like a bitch, I'd probably put like a Patreon link here, yeah, subscribe to me there, and maybe press the like button even though I hide my likes, even though everybody likes my videos anyway, according to the studio thing. But you guys are awesome, and uh, hopefully I will get around to making another video again. Speaking of which, I made like five videos this year. That's like a record or something. It's not as much as I did like five or six years ago, but hey. You guys are all right. I'll see you all later. Yar, Space Lobster!